Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I'm, I pray that you're having a great day. And uh, it's me. It's that time of the week where I come to invite you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yeah, Bible study. Tonight we're going to study the word of the Lord together, and I'm excited about what God has given me to share with the people of God. And also, also, I pray that you're having a great week. Despite all of the things that are going on in the world, I tell you, ours is a busy world, and I'm going to be honest with you. I think that the world is going crazy. I mean crazy. And one of the things uh, that's, that's, that's worse than crazy is that we're becoming a lawless society. The Bible speaks of the mystery of iniquity. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse seven, Paul said, even in his day, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Iniquity, mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness. It is the work of the antichrist behind, behind the scenes. And we're in a society where we are seeing the rule of law. Law means less and less and less. It, it depends on now, why are you protesting? Why are you protesting? Why are you burning a building as to whether or not you will get charged? Not, not the act in and of itself. Uh, if you were protesting during the, the summer of last year uh, and you were involved in the George Floyd protests, as you know, the decision has been made not to prosecute anybody, even though $2 billion in damage was done. About 50 people uh, lost their lives, uh, 46 to 50 people. Oh, my. So many things happened that was just wrong. Many of those businesses are not up and running today. But if you were a part of the January 6th uh, uh, protest, then uh, where uh, uh, the people were unarmed and the only person who lost their life was an unarmed lady who was shot by a police officer and or, or, or someone in charge at the Capitol. And we can't even get footage or any information on why uh, he shot her or what took place. And yet there are people who are who are locked up. They have not been tried. They have not been given their day in court. So I guess that uh, protest in one place that that act of uh, civil disobedience and lawlessness that I cannot justify, nor would I have participated in, and I don't think it was right. That's not my position at all. But I do think that there's something wrong with a person prosecuting people for that, for that. And on the other hand, we just dismissed all of those who rioted and, and uh, burnt businesses and destroyed cities uh, across the country. <laughs> There's something wrong. And do you see what's going on with Ky Kyrie Irving? Now, uh, I, I don't know Kyrie Irving uh, other than what y you see. I'm not uh, necessarily a Brooklyn Nets uh, fan, but I don't think that that's necessary for me to have an opinion on this. Um, I watch the NBA. Uh, I'm not I'm not a loyal fan of it. Uh, uh, there are some players who I think are, are great, and then there are others who um, – you know, I, I, I'm mildly impressed, and they, I probably feel about them what they probably feel about me. You know, God bless them, and uh, I'm glad the NBA exists as a uh, organization. It's, it, it has been one of the. Uh, it, it has lifted many of African Americans from poverty to super wealth, and 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 praise the Lord for that. But now to see the attack that, that on uh, ESPN, to see, to hear the the talking heads just come after Kyrie Irving, a individual who is not comfortable with putting. Now you really technically shouldn't call it a vaccine. From who is not comfortable with putting technology in his body that the makers of the technology, I don't know if you know about this, Stephen A., and some of the other people on your guests, the makers of the technology still cannot be sued. 
Now, they don't have to stand behind what they've made. It was rushed to market. Uh, then candidate uh, Joe Biden, candidate Kamala Harris, and all of the Democrats, when they weren't in the White House, cast doubt on, on, the, um, on, the, on, on the technology, a.k.a. the vaccines. And, uh, and, and there, there are things, negative side effects. There have been loss of life. And for this man to pause and say, I'm not sure that I want to, want to do this, to call him selfish, uh, to, to, to suggest that he should take one for the team, you know, take one for the team. How far does that go? I mean, because uh, uh, one thing is for certain, when the Brooklyn Nets organization is through with him and when they determine he can bring no more value to that organization, they're not going to take one for him. They're going to do like they do all of the professional athletes. They will be unceremoniously dismissed. Thank you for your service. Hey, uh, we paid you and it's over. You're replaced. And, the, and those same fans who worship you today when you're able to perform at the top of the game, nobody is more fickle than sports fans. The moment you can no longer throw the ball, run the ball, kick the ball or whatever, they turn on you and they scream, replace you. And the, whoever the flavor of the month is, that person takes your place. And that person is under, under the impression that the fans love him <laughs> or that the fans love her until they can no longer do it anymore. And then they will see the fans turn on them. It's, it's a cruel cycle, but you pay them. They're professional athletes. Now, but that this man is exercising his legal right. Now, I have in my hand here a copy. I won't read the whole thing because I got to move on. Of the Nuremberg Codes, uh, uh, passed into law 1947, the Nuremberg Codes states the voluntary consent of the human subject is absolutely essential. This means that the person involved should have legal capacity to give consent, should be so situated as to be able to exercise free power of choice without the intervention of any element of force, fraud, deceit, duress, overreaching, or, or other ulterior forms of constraint or coercion and should have sufficient knowledge and comprehension of the element uh, of the element of the subject matter involved as to enable him to make an understanding and enlightened decision. Now, this is just a portion of the Nuremberg Code uh, that is that has that have stood since 1947. I guess this is out the window now that uh, you know Kyrie is being selfish. Kyrie is out for Kyrie simply because Kyrie, a human being. And when he gave his, uh, 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 when he talked, he, we, we gave his press release the other day. You know, I thought he did a great job uh, humanizing himself. Uh, and I think he's realizing that he thought that the fans thought and that the team thought that he was a human only for him to find out, hey, man, you're not human at all. You are chattel. And, I, and, you know, black folk ought to feel some kind of way about this. You are a slave. We're gonna, no, we're going to pay you. We're going to pay you good. But. You know, people got mad. People got mad when Laura Ingram told LeBron James to shut up and dribble. Well, now the 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 the, the Nets are telling uh, Kyrie, shut up and take the jab. Or if you don't take the jab, then you can't play. You can't practice. You can't come on the facilities. When Nuremberg Code says you're not supposed to have that kind of coercion, but we live in a day of lawlessness, and so what does it matter? And here in my own precious state, I just got to I just got to say something in our own precious state, the great state of North Carolina, North Carolina, many in North Carolina have lost their minds. We have a tremendous lieutenant governor, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, a history making lieutenant governor, the only African-American lieutenant governor in the history of this this here great state.
And the man is doing a fantastic job. And all oh, he's been attacked by these white leftists, they're the greatest racists on the face of the earth. Ain't nobody, no one is a racist like a white leftist because, oh, they, they want to promote a, a program. Uh, they want to promote an ideology. They have something that they want to promote, uh, their vision, even at the expense of our children. And the lieutenant governor is standing, and I tell you, he's all man. I thank God for him. I thank God for him. And I agree with him 100%. I agree with his choice of words. He called what they're trying to do in the public school system with our children filth. I think that filth is almost a euphemism to be used to describe the mind-bending techniques that they are trying to apply to children in their formative years, trying to get boys to see little boys now as girls when the boy changes his mind and decides he wants to be a girl. We want to teach them that homosexuality, lesbianism, and all these things are clean, pure, normal, and natural. Want, want, want to promote in schools uh, these ideas to our children where in, in their formative years, they want to they want to teach our children things that they know, that they know that once the children are taught, they can't unlearn it. See, these people know, these folk are wicked to the core. They know how the human mind works. They know that there are certain things that you can see that you can't unsee, certain things that you can hear that you can't unhear, and certain things that you could teach, certain ideologies, certain agendas that you can teach that, that can't be untaught. The devil will just hook it into their spirits and they're coming after our children. Well, I want to thank God that the overwhelming of calls and support that's coming in to our lieutenant governor are overwhelmingly supportive. Don't let the news uh, uh, fool you. Uh, people support our governor. As a matter of fact, I talked to him the other night and he told me that the overwhelming majority of calls that's coming into his office are supportive don't be moved by those losers that they had the other day doing a press conference. Uh, 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 preachers, preachers, uh, in, in, listen, lesbians and homosexuals wearing uh, turn back collars, attacking the man for telling the truth. There's nothing that the lieutenant governor said that is contrary to the Christian doctrine. There's nothing that he said that is wrong. And thank God he told me out of his own mouth that uh, a, the, 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 a, a great number of the calls that are coming in, check this out, are from black women. Black parents, black women calling saying, we didn't know that this is what they were trying to do to our children. And those sisters are saying to uh, our Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, stand your ground, man. We are for you. See, Satan means this thing for evil, but God mean, it means it for good. And I say to the Lieutenant Governor and all right thinking North Carolinians and, 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 and Christians around the world, Let's pray for him. Let's hold him up. We just, that was just a big prayer meeting, uh, uh, yesterday in the, the mansion there with the lieutenant governor and God is doing great things. And so I, I thank God for him. I'm praying for him. I'm praying for him. I'm praying that the Lord keep him and watch over him and cause his face to shine upon him. Now I got to go, but let me tell you, this cancel culture has gone uh, crazy. Now, I'm not a fan of Coach Gruden. Uh, I'm not a fan of the Los Angeles Raiders. I wasn't that fan when they were the LA Raiders. Uh, and uh, back in the day, I kind of liked them when they were the Oakland Raiders. But, uh, you know, my team, my team, I, I'm not going to mention my team. My team hadn't, hadn't done anything uh, worth bragging about in a long time. But it is the only NFL team to ever run the numbers, run the table, and win a Super Bowl and go undefeated. So if you're, if you're a halfway uh, sports fan, then you know who I'm talking about. And if you don't, I'm not going to tell you. But anyway, now we're redefining things. We're redefining things. Now, it's apparent that I haven't heard all that is being said uh, because if misogyny is not wanting a woman to coach in the uh, NFL, 
then there's a lot there's a lot of misog- misogynistic men out, out there. I don't think that's misogyny. It's not violence against women. That's not having a bias or resentment toward a woman. It's the NFL. Now, I know that the game today is not the game that it was 10 years ago, five, even five years ago. And I celebrate what uh, uh, Tom Brady and others are doing. But let's be honest, Tom Brady didn't play in Terry Bradshaw's in NFL. Man, if they could, if they could tackle these guys t- today like they could then, all of them would be home. And some of them would have never even made the the team because they just don't have the toughness uh, to to, to hang with uh, being driven through the the field. But listen, listen, when the media reports things, and I'm not defending Coach Gruden, but I I, I pay attention to how things are, are reported. He made homophobic, misogynistic, racist comments. So now, uh, so I thought maybe that, that he had used the N-word. So, so far, maybe he did. But so far, what I've read, Brother Gary, nobody's accusing him of that. Uh, if, if, if talking about uh, someone's body, whether it's their lips, their ears, their nose, their eyes, their mouth, Body parts that we all have, that whether you're white, black, red, yellow, whatever, we all have. If that's the new, if that's the new racist uh, form of racism, then uh, there's a lot of racist people out there, and there's a lot of hypocrites talking on television who have done the same things. And I tell you, uh, I imagine there's some nervous people about their emails. Uh, uh, and uh, and I, I, I'm concerned. I, I'm, I'm amazed that no one is concerned about the fact that, th- that these things were leaked. Now, that uh, Coach Gruden has resigned. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to shed any tears over that. I won't lose any sleep over that. I guarantee you, he got his money. He got paid. I'm not, as I said, I'm not a Gruden fan one way or the other. But if, but if every time someone makes a comment about someone or they disagree with them and, and they're not the same color, if that's going to be chalked up as racism, I'm telling you, we, 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 where, will, where will the line be drawn? And I know, I've already told you that the new protected class in America uh, is the homosexual class. The LBGTQ community, whoo, you can't, you can't disagree with them. You can't, you can't, you can't uh, have a discussion with them and you take a, a, a position that is separate from theirs because if you do, you're called homophobic and oh, now you get labeled. And I wish as an African American, a straight African-American male who were born in America. I've been, a, I've been an American all of my life. Yay, all these 60 years I've been an American. Man, it would have been something just to uh, receive, I don't know, 2% of the protection that the LBGTQ community receives today. They w- Look, we've redefined marriage to accommodate the White House was decked out in their colors to accommodate. You, you can be a journeyman in the NFL, not a starter, and come out and announce that you are, you know, that you're a homosexual and then say that, you know, it's nobody's business and, and, and you don't want, want it to be talked about, but you told everybody, see. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I tell you what, I think it's a good way to stay on the team and to keep your job. And isn't it ironic that Coach Gruden is the one that gave the guy a chance? So I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that's going on today that we better be careful about uh, because people talk. Black people know this. White people know this. People tend to talk in more relaxed terms. People are much freer in what they have to say. And many times they, they mean absolutely no harm when talking, when thinking that what they're communicating is private. And uh, and so here we are. We're in this time, day where what... Uh, 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 what you say in private, and I hadn't mentioned what was said in private as far as we know today, 10 years ago, when he was not an employee of the NFL, not an employee of any team. So uh, I, 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 I hope that this serves as a, uh, preca- as a warning to people who are out posting this, that, and the other. 
Beware. I've said it for years. They may go back and read your posts. They may go back and see the things that you put out there. And those things may come back and bite you. And uh, I guarantee if you get bitten, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Joe Sixpack, Mr. Regular Everyday Citizen, you're not going to walk away with the money that Gruden walked away with. I guarantee that. So listen, I, I feel like a news reporter today. <laughs> But all of this is to say that it's the mystery of iniquity. It's lawlessness. Up is down. Down is up. Isaiah said, woe be unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put light for darkness and darkness for light, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And we're living in a day where we're doing just that. But this has not changed at all. Oh, the word of God is right and we're standing on the word of the Lord. And I tell you, I'm excited about teaching it tonight. I know I ran long today. So join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yeah, Bible study. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. God bless.